Hello, South Knoxville Church of God. Hello, guests. Welcome to Wielding the Sword of the Spirit. Great to have you back with us this evening. Uh, before we really get started, uh, let me just uh, open us with prayer. I've got a few announcements. We'll probably make those at the end, but uh, I want to uh, get straight into our study tonight. And uh, so let's open with prayer and get that covered. Heavenly Father, as we come before you right now, we pray, God, that you would just uh, be with us in a great way this evening. Lord, we are in this study so that we might be able to better wield the sword of the Spirit, your word, the word of God, be able to handle your word of truth. And Father, I pray that you would open our understanding. I pray, God, that tonight you would just uh, open our, our spiritual eyes, our spiritual ears, open our hearts, and help us, Lord, to realize that uh, this is an amazing day that we live in. You've given us great, uh, great tools to be able to know and understand your word better. I pray, God, that you would uh, touch each person that watches this video. And in this series, God, I pray that uh, each of us would come to know you better and be able to handle your word as you've uh, desired for us to do. And we give you thanks, Lord, in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, great to have you with us tonight. Um, I'm going to ask you uh, tonight to grab a pen and a piece of paper, and I'm going to let you write down some links. Um, I will also, I know by saying this, I'm probably going to cause some of you to not grab that pen and piece of paper, but I still would like for you to do that. I will also try to post uh, a link in the comments that will tell you uh, where you can get access to all of these different study tools that I'm going to uh, be uh, sharing with you tonight. And uh, let me remind you that the whole purpose of this study, this series, is so that we might be able to better know the Word of God, better use it properly. I said that even in our prayer. And one of our main scriptures is from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And that's where I want to start tonight. And we're all familiar with with that scripture, and it says, study to show yourself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I want to look at that, and um, I want to share with you tonight uh, the New King James Version, which is what we're using in this series, And it, but it says it a little, a little differently. It says, be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, we talked about previously in this series, we talked about how the, the, the word is sharper than a two-edged sword and that it even can divide asunder the, the bone and the marrow or the, 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 the spirit and the soul. And so in knowing that, talking about the word of God, what we're asking the Lord to do in this study is, is to really open up revelation and help us to be able to better study this word and let it come alive to us. Um, we've talked about that already to some extent. We, we've covered a lot of things. We talked about the fear of the Lord being the beginning of wisdom. We've talked about where our Bible came from. We've talked about um, the Bible having more to it than meets the eye. We've talked about the Holy Spirit leading us into all truths or being our teacher, the Holy Spirit the teacher. We've talked about Rhema uh, the inspired word of God, God-breathed word that comes alive to us when we receive revelation. We've also talked about asking, seeking, and knocking. You remember that study, I'm sure. Um, we've talked about praying the scripture. I think that was last week. We've talked about praying the scripture so that our prayers are more powerful. So when we are looking at all of these things, we're, we're getting closer toward the end of this series. We're looking at all these things. We can see that uh, the Bible is is powerful, and there's so much in it that it makes it difficult sometimes for just the the average layperson to really understand and to um, to feel like they have a good grasp on it. But I don't think that's the will of the Lord. The Lord wants us to understand what His Word is. I mentioned that last week, and I believe uh, two weeks ago, and I believe that I said that it was. I thought it was Galatians chapter five verse seventeen. I looked it up. It was Ephesians chapter five verse seventeen. We put a reference in the video so you would uh, so you would be sure to, to be able to find the right place. But 
the Lord wants us to understand what his will is. Well, the will of the Lord is found in the word of the Lord. And so we need to understand the will of the Lord. So we need to understand the word of the Lord. And so the tools that I'm going to share with you today are simply to help you be able to better understand the word of God, to know the word of God. Uh, so if you've missed any that we've already covered, any of those studies that we've just mentioned, talked about, uh, by all means, please back up and watch those because um, this just builds as we go. And I believe that if you will back up, if you've not watched those, that it will help you uh, gain a greater understanding and you'll move forward in your uh, ability to understand the Word of God. Um, also, those videos are available on my YouTube. You can just do a search for, for me, Jerry, Jerry Loudermilk. Uh, you should be able to find it also on the church Facebook, Facebook page. You can, uh, you can go back through um, South Knoxville Church of God. You, you can just go to facebook.com forward slash, slash SKCOG and uh, look back through videos and find all of those. They're all there. It might just be a little bit of searching. Um, a little easier probably on YouTube. Um, then um, there's also uh, my Facebook page, but that takes in all of my personal posts and everything, so it'd be a little more difficult to find. Uh, today's Bible study, again, we're talking about uh, really cutting edge tools. And we might call we might say it this way. Um, we're looking at 21st century tools for understanding the Word of God. This is a very important study. It's not as much a Bible study as it is me helping you to understand what all is available to you. And it is amazing what all is available to the layman today. I believe with all my heart that there has never been a better time for the, the student of the Bible than the day we live in. If we consider, um, if we consider what the, the times that we live in now and what it was like uh, even just a few years ago, we see that uh, it's amazing the the knowledge that's available to us now that was not available to us then. I'll I'll speak on that again in just a moment. But um, I want to share with you some tools today, like the Blue Letter Bible and um, like Strong's Concordance Online. Some of those things, and I'll give you links for all that. We'll go there, um, and we have we have access through. Um, online resources to basically all the information in the world. And that is absolutely astounding. It's amazing to our minds. This was not available um, even when I was born. It was not available when I was a teenager. Uh, it was not available just a few years ago, but it is available to us now. And we need to take advantage of all the, uh, the, the, the technology and the discoveries that God has allowed to uh, to, to come our way so that we might be able to understand and know his word better. And you might say, well, I'm not technological. You don't have to be. This stuff is really simple, and I'm going to show you how to use it. We're going to try to do that on screen, and, and you'll be able to see it on your computer in just a few moments. Let me take you, before we do, to Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. New King James Version says, but you, Daniel, God speaking to him, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Now, I want you to notice that God spoke to Daniel and told him to shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end, and many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. So God was telling Daniel to close the, the, the book on what all the revelation that he had given him so that it could not be understood until the time of the end, and then God would give knowledge and understanding for us to understand that we, I believe with all my heart, all my heart, we are in the last days. On Sundays, I've been preaching uh, about the spirit of error, and I'm not going to go into all that right now, but just to clarify to you that we're in the last days, Jesus said that um, the spirit of error was already at work in the world which was foretold that he would come. Okay, that tells us that we're in the last days, I believe. But also another scripture that we can look at is Joel chapter two, that tells us that the Lord says, that I will pour out of my spirit upon all, all flesh. And he, he, he clarifies in the last days. And then we see that happening in Acts chapter two, 
And I believe it was Peter stood up and said, uh, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. So we see that we are in the last days. Now we're not only in the last days, we're in the, the end of the age. I believe that's clear too, and we can find that in Matthew chapter 24, I believe it's verse seven, tells what signs would be the end of the age. We're there. So without spending too long there, and, and, and Lord willing, the next series may be, if, if the Lord allows, about prophecy and some of the things that are happening in the world. But I want us to understand that knowledge is, 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 is prophesied to increase in the last days. And we can, we can see this uh, so clearly now. No person in history, no person in the history of the world, nobody has had access to the understanding, the knowledge of the word of God like you do today. Nobody in the history of the world has had the access to this. King James didn't with all of his scholars. Uh, no one else through history has had access to all of the information that has been just laid in front of us in this day. Part of that is because God had closed up the, the availability of knowledge until the end. And then partly because he has allowed technology to expand and, and really explode the availability to knowledge today. So in the past, people had to depend on the priest or the preacher to bring forth the Bible and tell them even what it said, not just what it meant, but what it said. Uh, we live in a day now where people are much more educated. Most everyone can read, and, and we have access. Most all of us have a Bible, and we have access to that. Some people don't in other parts of the world, and Bibles are like gold. And if you've never seen the video of, of uh, the Bibles that were being handed out in China and, and how people were, were trying their best to get a hold of them, you should see if you can find that. It's amazing. This, this is, it, it's, it's worth more than we even know. But it's not just the paper, and it's not just the leather or the binding. It's, it's the word that's inside this. It's the sword of the Spirit. It's so valuable because it is the spoken word of God written down. It was spoken to men of old. They wrote it down. It's so valuable because this is our, this is our, our, our life. It is, uh, it, it is everything that we need for life and godliness. This is so valuable because this is also a sword for which we can fight and wage war against the powers of darkness through prayer, like we talked about last week, and also uh, in just declarate, declarations, declaring what God has said in His Word. Now, I want to I want to say I want to say this. I started saying it. I don't think I finished it, but in the past, people had to depend on priests, preachers to read and tell them what the Bible said. Now, most of us can read for ourselves at our own pace, at our own level. We talked about the Bible, where it came from, what the different versions are, and there are different uh, there are different versions that are available for different reading levels. All that's okay uh, if if you if you use it properly. Uh, I, I you have to go back and watch that one if you didn't see it because I don't recommend uh, really don't recommend the uh, the paraphrases. Uh, I do recommend thought for thought, uh, but more than that, I recommend top quality, word for word, which would include certain versions, including King James, New King James, New American Standard. You have to go back and watch that one if you didn't see it. Um, but anyway, um, we have today not only the written Bible that we can read and, and hopefully at least understand portions of it, but we have a multitude of tools, cutting edge tools that are available to us to understand, to read, to, um, to remind us uh, of, of our responsibility to the Word uh, and to teach us how to delve deeper into its pages. Now, I want to get into, in just a moment, I want to get into these different tools that are available to us. And there are, there are many, but I want to share with you just a few. And I'm going to take you there, and we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to show you on screen, try to, um, how we... Uh, we can access these, and and I'll give you just a, a quick tutorial of of how to uh, how to use them. Um, 
But let me tell you, number one, I'm going to start with number one. Let me tell you that nothing is more important, uh, a more important tool to the study of the Word than we've already talked about, the Holy Spirit, the Helper. And I don't really want to call him a tool, but the Holy Spirit, the Helper, is the very best tool that you can have in understanding the Word of God. So let me give you a, a, a couple things that will go with your study of the Word. You need a Bible, and and you need one that it can be. It actually can be on your phone. I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes too. Uh, but I would recommend that you at least have uh, an actual old school paper and leather Bible, and uh, take that. Uh, don't be afraid to underline it. Don't be afraid to highlight, um, make notes in it, whatever. Uh, those things are actually precious to the generations that follow you. Um, I would also recommend a notepad and, and a pen, uh, and it could be much bigger than that. Um, my problem with that, and those are good, um, my problem with that is that so often I will, uh, I will um, make a note, I'll put it in the notepad, I'll misplace the notepad, and I sometimes, years later, will find those notepads, and they're important to me, and they're, and I really am glad to find them, but you can't, you can't necessarily uh, find them when you need them, and you can't necessarily categorize the notes as you'd like. Now, I want to share one with you uh, that's on my screen right now, and uh, I want to, and I really wasn't planning on going into all this, but this, this will be uh, this will be the first one that, that's online, and it's actually an app that you can download. It's called Evernote. Uh, you can download this, and it is available on whatever device that you're using, and I've got plenty of them with me today. Uh, it's available on, uh, on your iPad, your, your, your phone. Uh, it's, a, it's available on uh, Samsung Galaxy. Uh, it's available on your computer, your PC, your Mac, whatever. It, it's available... Uh, across what, what what I mean by that, it's available across all those different things. So if I make a note on my phone, it shows up also on my computer on my iPad. This is what I use to to make my preaching notes from Evernote. So what I what I can do, and I'm showing you on the screen right now, what I can do is is um, you can actually go to Evernote.com and 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 do it online. I, I prefer the app, um, and so I'm in the app here, but. What I do is I, I just go in, and it, for instance, if I want to make a new note, I click right here. I put in whatever the title might be, and if, I, if I'm if i doing, uh, for instance, uh, a study note, I can, I can type in uh, study note, and I can put today's date if I wanted to, May 19. By the way, this is pre-recorded. You'll see this on May the 20th. But as I'm doing this, it's it's uh, May 19th, and today is, and I and I I'm trying to talk, and it's not so easily done for me to talk and work at the same time. Today is my wife's birthday. By the time you're seeing this, it is the day after her birthday. But I want to wish my wife a very happy birthday. Okay, back to the study. Uh, so you make the you make the title. You could call that study note May 19 if you'd like, or you can uh, you can call it according to topic. For instance, if I was going to uh, study the whole book of Titus, I could just write uh, Titus in here. And, and then you begin with whatever scripture you'd like or whatever you want to put in. I usually put in a scripture reference first. That's up to you. But let's say it was Titus 1.1. I'd type that in there. And I would maybe even copy and paste from uh, one of the other sources I'll show you in a minute. Put that in there. Uh, I'll make reference, make notes to it. Then when I save that, it, it's gonna it's gonna show up. Um, it's gonna show up later. I, I, right now I went out of it. I'm back in it. It saves automatically in the app, by the way. Uh, so I can I can actually bring that up then, and I can look at it on my phone, and I will uh, I'll see that the the app that I have that I'm using carries those notes over, and I'm also seeing it on my on my phone. And you don't have to look at it. well. I've, I've got the password protected, but it will show up there. So back to the screen here. Let me show you. Here's here are my notes for today, and um, everything that I've said basically is there. I put too much notes together, but here are some of the notes that I'm going to recommend to you. The links I'm going to recommend to you in a few moments. If if I want to do a search for a note, perhaps I want to talk about uh, discipleship, which I've talked a lot about. 
I can type in disciple or discipleship and it will automatically take me, do a search and take me to all of those notes that are related to that. I can, uh, I can put tags such as discipleship or leadership or whatever and, um, and, and I can go in through these notes and look at all of the things that I have saved over, actually I've been using Evernote for years so I've got years worth of preaching notes and, and study notes, personal study notes. I've also, this, this shows me, this is, uh, this is all notebooks that I'm looking at, but I've got different, um, I've got different subjects here. Here's Tracy's family tree. Um, I, I've got, uh, I've got uh, my spiritual life. I've got mentoring, capital E, cap, I mean, capital M, capital E, capital N, because I'm, I'm putting together a study for men. Uh, I've got... Um, I've got book notes. I'm writing a couple books. Some of you know that. And here, here are some of those uh, ideas. Here are sermon notes down here. And you can see series. You can see uh, potential notes. And you can see used sermons. These used sermons are, are things that I've preached. Some of them, uh, at, like I say, going back years. And if I just jump way back through here, let's just jump back and look at one. Uh, from um, July the 3rd, uh, 2016, which was uh, just before Fourth of July, I preached "God Save America," uh, and and there's there's all these different notes, and they are readily accessible. You hold on to them; they're available through all of your different uh, media uh, sources, and and they're they're there for you. And and it it it's amazing. It's an amazing tool. Now that is just to to keep your knowledge, but if we're going to talk about uh, some of the other things that, that I want to show you. Let's, let's jump to uh, my browser and let's go to, um, I really want to tell you about uh, U version, Y-O-U, not, not the letter U, Y-O-U, and then the word version on your Bible. This is an app that you can punch in and, uh, and you, can, you can have reminders to, to read. Um, let me just show you here. You don't have to zoom in on this or anything, but this, this, uh, it's, it's available on my app, on my phone. I can read the Bible from here. I can, I can follow, uh, people that are preaching. I can make notes. I can highlight, I can bookmark, I can, uh, I can have plans. That's all available on my phone, but it's also available online. And so what I have on screen now is the online, uh, web version. And it's, it's found at my.bible.com and <clears throat> and you uh you you can set up an account and it's available for both i recommend it highly for your phone and i don't use it as much for my computer but it is it is still a good source resource um let me just show you a little bit about it right here i'm on the home page here's the verse of the day and today it's john 3 18 it says people who believe in god's son are not judged guilty those who do not believe have already been judged guilty because they have not believed on God's one and only Son. And, and so you get a verse every day that tells you, um, uh, gives you something to think on. And, and uh, here, here are some, Lindsay doesn't know this, we're doing this, but here are some notes that are, are some uh, scriptures that she has marked, that she has saved. And here, here's one. So you should also consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ. That's Romans chapter six, verse 11. So I can look down through here at, at friends of mine and see what they are studying and reading about. And, and you can even have interactions. I can comment like here on uh, Pastor Tony Valentine in South Africa. I can I could comment on what he is, uh, he, he's reading through uh, a Bible plan, one year uh, Bible plan. I could I could comment on that. Here's, here's my mom, she has just read uh, day 283 of 365. Uh, I don't necessarily use it so much uh, for that social interaction, but it's, it's available to you. Here's another. Uh, this is my favorite part, the plans. If I click on plans, this tells me every plan, and that's not correct. There we go. Uh, it shows me every plan that I'm subscribed to, and I'm just sub subscribed to chronological version or the chronological uh, plan. And if I, if I click on that plan and go into it, then it shows me uh, what I have read, where I am. Uh, I, for today, I still need to read Daniel chapter 11 and Daniel chapter 12. 
Here's what comes up tomorrow. If I want to read ahead, a week ahead, and mark it off, it'll, it'll keep track of that. Here's what I read. I can back up. Here's what I read in past days. So these things are all available. If I click the start reading, it's going to take me automatically to Daniel chapter 11. So I'm going to click that and just show you. It takes me, well, it took me to chapter 10 because that's uh, what I had highlighted there. But I can read all that when I finish it. I click the next button and it goes on to Daniel chapter 11. Um, so Uversion is a great resource for reading the Bible through in a year uh, or reading the Bible regularly, daily, on a regular daily, daily basis. It's also good uh, for, for some other things. There's videos that you can watch. Um, this is from the Jesus film. Uh, there's, there's the Gospel of Luke. There's several different things. Uh, but like I say, you can, uh, you, you can even uh, read straight from the Word of God. Let me bring this up. And, and you can just search whatever, whatever book that you want to go to and, and go there and read. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about, I want to go to, um, let me get on my notes here so I don't forget anything that I want to tell you. But uh, the next thing I want to talk about is... Um, is Bible Hub, and I'm going to take you to BibleHub.com. I have, uh, if, if you just type in BibleHub.com, you'll go to this page. It won't go to John 1.1. That's something I already put in. Uh, if, you want to, if you want to look for a keyword or if you want to uh, do a reference, a, a certain scripture you're looking for, uh, you can do a word search. For instance, if I wanted to, uh, if I wanted to look at uh, Word, for instance, um, if I just type word in there, it's going to come back with all, it's going to do a Bible search and it's going to come back with all these different um, references and, and you can just, you can keep scrolling through them, but all these different references of the word, word that is, that is found uh, in the word of God. If, if I, uh, if I want to do um, a more specific search for, for instance, as, as I said earlier, John 1, 1. I just type that in there, and it's going to take me there. And I can uh, here's here's the unique thing about uh, Bible Hub, and what I like so much about it. You see all of these different versions together. You see, um, if you look down the looking down the screen here with me, you see New International Version, you see uh, New Living Translation, New English Standard, Bi uh, Berean Study Bible, Berean Liter Literal Bible. Anyway, New American Standard, New King James, King James Version. Right on down, you have all of these together that you can compare and, and, and see what the Word says. Now, if, if let's look at the Holman Christian Standard. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If you'll notice, that's very similar, if not exact, um, to what we're, what we're accustomed to. New American Standard is basically the same. New King James Version, basically the same. But some of these uh, different scriptures, there will be... Um, there, there will be a, a variation that will help us to understand it better. If we look at the New Living Translation, it says beginning, in the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was uh, God. And we're talking, of course, here about Jesus Christ. So we know that Jesus already existed. In the beginning was the Word. He already existed. This clarifies this for you. This helps us understand we're talking about Jesus, and he already existed before time began. Okay, so there's some of the things that you can find. I like the, the option here to examine the, uh, the different versions together and to look at what they say, and, and this, this gives us the, the ability to, to break a scripture down uh, in some ways by looking just to see uh, what each version says about it. Next one I want to go to, and I'm not typing these in because I've already got them prepared here and ready for us, but the next one is BibleGateway.com. Just all one word, BibleGateway.com. Now, in, in BibleGateway.com, this website allows you to do some of the very same things that Bible Hub uh, does. It, it, uh, it does some of those same things. You can do a word search. Uh, you can do a passage search just like we did in, in uh, Bible Hub. But in Bible Gateway, it also offers uh, devotions, newsletters, 
Um, and let's look at, for instance, look, let's look at these newsletters. You, you see here the Explore More. Uh, let's look at newsletters. Let's go there. And, and so we see here um, some of the, the newsletters that are available. The newest devotionals in our library that it, it tells are Grace for the Moment, uh, Hope for the Morning, Bible Gateway Weekly Brief, and then we see the verse of the day you can get uh, that's, that's emailed to you every day rather than having to go into version and look at it. Uh, these things are available to you. You can come on down here to Classic Devotions, and these are some of the ones that I like the best. You've got a 40-day journey with Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and if you don't know who that is, he is, uh, he is one of the, he, he died, um, I think, in, uh, in a prison camp in World War II because he stood up for, for the Jews. He was, a, he was a Christian preacher, stood up for the Jews, but he was an amazing teacher on discipleship. And you can see C.S. Uh, Lewis Daily uh, writings. They'll send you something. And there's Charles Spurgeon, Morning and Evening, uh, some great devotionals. And this can just uh, help you get start your morning, get in the mood to, to follow God all day long. There's a bunch of them, and I'm not going to go all into all these, but uh, those are available on BibleGateway.com and click on the Explore More. Now, uh, that, that's, that's devotionals and it's newsletters. Some of those are available, so they're available right there. Um, I wanted to tell you that because that can really, that can really help you um, to, to, to kick your day off correctly. There's also uh, reading plans, and in these, in these reading plans uh, and study tools, and, uh, there, there are things that you can, uh, you can set up your own reading plan and, and uh, set reminders and all that, I think. I don't use this one. I use version, but uh, those things are available. And Bible Gateway is a is it's a really good resource. Um, next one that I have for you today is um, is StudyLight.org. Um, I have already uh, I've gone there. Let me just go ahead and take you back to the beginning here. This is StudyLight. All a lot of these have some of the same features, but they have other features. And so I mentioned all of them because there are some things that they do specifically that are um, are very uh, unique to them, but they're they're very helpful. So we can do a general Bible search right here. You can type in a phrase or a topic to start. Um, and and so for instance, if we were wanting to look for uh, for peace of God, say uh, we we just type in peace. I think we can type in the whole phrase peace of God. And we can do a search, and it will, well, it didn't do with the whole phrase, but you can type in peace, and you can do a search here, um, and, and you can come up with all of these different, there's spiritual peace, prince of peace. These are, uh, this is from a topical Bible. It gives you references that you can look here, places that you can look. It brings up encyclopedias, uh, brings up the Greek lexicon. Then on down here, it gives you Bible verses. So it's, it's very handy. Brings a lot of um, a lot of things to uh, to the table. Uh, really a good a good resource. Um, there, there's other language. I mean, original language tools. There's historic writings, pastoral resources. Uh, there's there's personal resources. What what I want to really share with you more about Study Light uh, is that it has a list of 28 Bible dictionaries. Now I haven't used them all. Uh, but there are a few on there that I really like. And let's see if I can get back to uh, those Bible dictionaries. You click on Bible study tools. You have commentaries, you have concordances, and you have Bible dictionaries. Well, today it only shows 27. The day before yesterday, it was 28. But we'll go to that. If you look down through here, you can see all of these different uh, Bible dictionaries. And these are... Um, some of them I've never heard of. Some of them I have. Easton's Bible Dictionary is a really good one. It's one that I go to often. So I'm going to take you into that one. You can just look down through here and, and look at words. Uh, you could pick out, for instance, Abinadab and see what his name meant, what it was all about. Or you can come down here and go to the search bar and type in, for instance, Adam and go there. And uh, the, you, you have... You have it was the name of a city. Uh, we, we talked about um, him being a, we, um, we talked about types and shadows uh, in, in uh, last week's message. And, and we 
or week before, week before, uh, and we talked about uh, that. Well, he was a type and a shadow uh, of Jesus. Although he failed, Jesus succeeded. Jesus is called the second Adam. So, but but what I wanted to show you here, we we have all these different references, and uh, if we look at his name in particular and go there, we see that we see that the the word is is a Babylonian word. Um, it, it is the same, if we continue to read there, it is the same in Hebrew and several other languages, Assyrian languages, uh, but it actually means red. He was made from the dust of the earth or from clay. Uh, he probably had a red tint to his skin. It's interesting. Um, it, it, it also goes on to tell that he was the first man. He was formed out of the dust. It tells God breathed into his breath. It tells all about Adam. We can see uh, a, a map here that gives us, um, sometimes will give us reference to the location. Uh, anyway, this thing, this studylight.org is really helpful. If you're looking for a Bible dictionary, I would recommend this one. If you want to look something up by word uh, to see what the meaning is, what where it's found, some of those things, it does give references in here too, such as Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. And uh, Genesis chapter 5, it goes on, it gives some um, references, even the New Testament. But these these things are available through studylight.org. There are other things that are available here that I haven't really accessed, such as uh, if we went into historical writings, we can see uh, B.C. and A.D. We can see church denominational history. I didn't know that was there. That's interesting. Um, don't get too sidetracked, even though it's interesting, don't get too sidetracked in that. We're trying to study the Word of God, not necessarily the church of Jesus Christ. So anyway, um, studylight.org, and then you can select from the top, or you can just do studylight.org forward slash dictionaries, and, and it'll take you to that, to that list. Um, Bible study tools, dictionaries, either way you get there. Okay, um, one of the, the main ones that I wanted to share with you, and this is, uh, this is probably the last um, one that I want to share, is the Blue Letter Bible. But before we go there, uh, actually, I guess there's one more, one more. Did I say Bible Study Tools? Let's go there real quick. Uh, BibleStudyTools.com. And if you go there, if you go to BibleStudyTools.com, let me take the commentaries out, and I'll show you how to get there. Uh, if you go to BibleStudyTools.com, you, you go back to uh, the main page. You also have where you can do a search. You also have where you can type in a scripture. You can do those things. Um, you can choose reference. You can uh, There's a place there for pastors. Uh, but if you want to study the Word, you can find this library, or you can find commentaries, concordances, dictionaries here. I don't know how many dictionaries are available. Let's just look at that really quickly. Uh, there's several. Easton's is available here, too. Uh, Smith's Bible Dictionary is a good one. It was on that other list as well. But commentaries and concordances are found here. There's even Bible stories for, for, uh, for us to read and, and probably that we could read to our kids. Uh, but I want to take you to commentaries. Now, I'm, I'm not a big fan, honestly, of commentaries. And commentaries serve their purpose, um, but they are, in most cases, just a... They're... they're they're a record of what someone uh, interpreted the word to say. So if you're reading, for instance, a commentary uh, that, that, was, that was put out by Matthew Henry, uh, Matthew Henry gave his thought, his commentary on what the word was meaning. It's just like if we listen to the president speak and then you have all this com news commentary that comes afterwards, they're telling us what he said. Well, I'd rather go to the source and listen to what, the Word of God says, and, and study it to find out the truth of the Word of God. I'm okay with going to some of these and, and looking at what other people said to help me get a, an understanding if I'm struggling with it. But don't take what any commentary says as gospel because it's, it's the thoughts of a man. One of my favorites is right here, John Gill's Exposi Exposition of the Bible. Some uh, there's a longer title for that. Uh, some places it's recorded as John Gill's Exposition of the Entire Bible. But you can go through here. You can select. Um, let's, let's go all the way to the New Testament. 
Uh, there's probably a quicker way to do this than I'm going, but let's go back to John 1.1 1, 1, and, and we'll see what he says about John 1.1 1, 1, since we've already mentioned that. And, and so we're looking at John Gill's exposition, exposition of the Bible. John Gill uh, was a, um, uh, a, a very well-learned scholar, preacher, uh, from uh, a little more than 100 years ago, I think, and, and uh, his commentary is very good. It's very, I believe, biblically based. Um, so he breaks it down here. It says, in the beginning was the word. He gives that phrase, and he tells about it. Uh, it says uh, that this is said not of the written word, but the essential word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. I already told you that, but we can see here that he's, he's clarifying that. If you go on down, I'm not going to read all this. There's too much, but if you go on down, you, you see... The continuation of this, the word was with God, and he tells about that, not with men or angels, for he was before either of these, but with God. And, and we could read on, he, tell, he tells more. He has some very good thought, but if we, could, if we continue, we read on, you see, he breaks down most every one of the phrases in the word of God and tells you what, uh, what all that's about. So I, I, if I'm looking for a commentary, I go to BibleStudyTools.com, and then I would probably choose John Gill's exposition of the entire Bible. Um, you might have one that you like better. That's, that's your prerogative. Now, I want to go to the last one that I want to share with you, and it is, as I said, my favorite tool. It's blueletterbible.com, or .org, let me see. Yeah, O-R-G, blueletterbible.org. I have this on my phone. It is available in an app. However, the app is not as useful as the website where you version is better on the phone or on the app, uh, on there I use, and, and Evernote is just as good on either your computer or your phone, uh, Blue Letter Bible is much better online. So I go usually to my computer, type in blueletterbible.org. I have it saved, actually, so I can just go there in my, uh, my notes. You, you, can, you can search a word, go by topic. You can t type in uh, a verse. Uh, you can see here some of my search history if you click on this. Uh, you can come down here. Let's, let's do that one first. John 1.1. 1, 1. And you do a search. You can select whatever version you want to read from. Let's do New American Standard. You, you click search, and it brings that back to you. It brings back each of these. Uh, not only do you get that verse, but you get the ones following it. And if it's middle of the chapter, you get before and after. You get you get the whole chapter there. Uh, I want to go back here because I want to show you the difference between searching up here in the search or the multiverse retrieval. If you go in the multiverse retrieval, you go John 1.1. 1, 1, you're just going to get John 1.1. 1, 1, and it's going to show you that scripture. If I'm copying to put in my notes on Evernote, I'll, I'll usually, if I've got a scripture I want, I'll punch it in right there. I'll, I'll highlight it. I'll copy it. And then I'll, I'll paste it, and, and it will. Let me just show you how to do that really quick. I'll go back to Evernote. Uh, let me go back to my notes that we were already started. We'll change this to John. One, one. And uh, we'll type in. Let me, I'll change the title. That's not what I wanted to say. Do John 1.1. 1, 1. I will, uh, I'll paste it. And uh, then I have what that scripture says. Usually myself, I like to highlight the scripture. I would call this the word. If I was going to preach on the word, speaking of Jesus Christ, that's how it would probably start it out. And then I would, I would go on from that. If we, I would likely have more than just one verse. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to, um, do the whole chapter. I can do it right here. I can type in John 1.1 1, 1, or John 1 and it will bring back every verse in that chapter all put together. So I could actually begin here, highlight, highlight as far down as I want to go. Um, he came, to, let's see, let me go on down. Um, okay. Um, let's just, let's just go ahead and go all the way down here to verse 16, copy that, take that back, paste it in, and, and we have then, um, this is our, we could do 
I'm, I'm just giving you a, a little view here of, of what I might do. John 1, 16, I mean 1 through 16. And then I usually put in what version that is. This is the New American Standard, so I don't uh, forget. And then you can highlight, you can, uh, whatever you wanted to, uh, to highlight, you can highlight, you can make it bold, you can uh, underline whatever. I did those backwards from what I was saying. Uh, but then if you wanted to make notes, you come on down here and make your notes. Um, and then you save that, it'll be there for you whenever. But anyway, I wanted to show you this because this is really a helpful tool. Now I wanna go back right here uh, to uh, the Bible search. You can, you can hit that and go back to the main thing or you could stay right here and type it in right here. But if we do, I want you to see this. This is one of the main reasons that um, I wanted to show you this tool. If I go to John 1.1 1, 1, and I click on, now there's all these tools available. You can, uh, you can see a lot of things here, Bibles, cross-references, uh, commentaries, dictionaries. I don't use these so much. Uh, sometimes there's dictionaries. There's Easton's, again, still available in this one. But, but what, I, what I do use to a great extent, especially in preaching and teaching, especially in teaching, is I click on, let me go back out of that, uh, I click on, after I've gone into John 1.1, 1, 1, I click on the scripture reference right here. And if I do that, it shows me every word. It shows the original uh, Greek and, and, or Hebrew, whatever it is in, in the New uh, Testament, of course, it's Greek. It shows me what those words are. It gives me a scripture reference. Um, I'm sorry, not a scripture reference, but a, a number reference, a numerical reference that goes with Strong's Concordance. And if I go to, for instance, word, it's... Uh, this, this number right here, it tells us the word here that is used is logos. Uh, if, if I looked at word in another place in the word of God, it might be some other word, but here it's logos. And if I click on G3056, which is the numerical reference for Strong's, it takes me into uh, a page that will, that will give me the definition. It, it will say of speech, a word uttered by a living voice, it, it goes into all this. It says the sayings of God. It says a discourse. Um, it gives uh, all of these different meanings and meanings. And down here it tells me John denotes the essential word of God, Jesus Christ, the personal wisdom, the power in the union of God. And it goes on to tell you all these things. But one thing that I like so much about it, it will help you pronounce it. If you don't know how to say the word, you click that. Strong's G. 3056. Lagos. Lagos. I was saying Lagos. Logos or Logos. It's Lagos. And, and it tells you how to pronounce that. It also tells you where the word originates, and, and you can click on that and get and go deeper into it. That's why sometimes I, I will say in, in my studies, this word also means, because you can see it right here, it clarifies it for you. This is such a powerful tool. Because, as I've said recently, and I don't know if it was on a Wednesday night study or on a Sunday, what, what we look at in, in the English language, whether it's King James Version or some other, what we look at in the Eng English language falls a little short of what the original language uh, actually means because Hebrew and Greek are far more descriptive than English is. So if we want to get what the full meaning of a word is, we can go here and, and we can look at it and see uh, the, the fullness of, of what this means. And we can learn how to pronounce it. Um, I've been trying to do that. So when I pronounce a word, I pronounce them more correctly. Um, we can see all those things and it's available to us. Um, if, if, we wanted to, if we wanted to look up, uh, let's see if I can type in uh, a word that we might want to look up. Uh, I don't know how to spell paraclete. Um, let me see if I can find that one. Let me just, uh, Google's not too bad of a, tool as well, but paraclete. It's P-A-R-C-L-E-T-E. -E. So I'm going to go back to uh, that, and, and it's in the Word of God. We might have to look in the King James Version, but P-A-R-A-C-L-E-T-E. -E. I'm going to change that to King James Version. Go to search. Um, we see it at least in the dictionary. 
uh, paraclete. We can look at it there. Um, and it, it tells you where this is used. It gives you, for instance, 1 John 1, 2. If I wanted to go back to uh, that, I would type it in here. I might be losing you. I hope I'm not. But anyway, I'm just giving you an idea of how all these tools work so well together. Um, but we can what we can do then is, is, is we see that paraclete means advocate. We could take that then if we wanted to, and we could go to commentary uh, and find out what uh, 1 John 1, 2 says, or we could take it to the Bible dictionary, type in paraclete. Uh, we can go to the original word, which is, uh, which is what paraclete really is. It's spelled differently, but we could go to the original word then through Strong's. We can look that up and see what the word means. Uh, we, can, we can learn a whole lot about it. In paraclete, Jesus is our, our advocate, our intercessor. Um, so all of these tools are, are available to us and they're readily available and they're, they're just so, uh, they're, they're so good and so um, available to us. Let me go back to Blue Letter, Blue Letter Bible. And, and they are, um, it just takes a little bit of using them to get very familiar with them. Uh, again, one of my favorite things uh, is to use, for instance, um, is to use the, uh, trying to do two things at once, is to use the the word feature where you can go in and look at, um, let me let me just read, we're going, I mean, the first Thessalonians chapter one, and let's go into that, and, and let's see. Um, for instance, um, so that ye were in samples to all that believe. So we see here, this is uh, in Macedonia and, and Archaea. Uh, so we see here that, and if we went to the first Thessalonians chapter one, verse seven, we wanted to see what in samples mean. I think we probably know, but it is old English. So we, we, we can click on the word. Let me do that first. We can click on the word and it shows us everywhere else in the word, the word of God that that word is used. Or we can click on the numerical reference and we can go to, we see what it means. It means it's, 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 Tupas is probably how it's really pronounced. It looks like typos. Strong's G, 5179, Tupas. Yeah, Tupas. Tupas. So, so then we look at what that means. We're examples or in samples. We see that it is a, clearly right here, an example. Uh, it tells us that an example to be imitated. imitated. Uh, we see all these things. We can even look at uh, the uh, this in far more detail. All these tools are available to us, and if, if you don't let it intimidate you, you can take any scripture that you're looking at, and you can, um, you can go to that verse. You can, you can see what the words mean originally. You can take those words then, type them in the, the, the dictionary. You can look at commentary on it. You can, um, you, you can you go into a very in-depth study, even on one scripture. You can break that down where you can find everything that the Lord was saying to us and all those different levels that we've talked about with the help of the Holy Spirit. Just the knowledge is not enough, but we have to have the Holy Spirit to bring it to our hearts. But the knowledge will help us in, in our mental understanding be able to comprehend what the Holy Spirit is trying to speak to us. Then we also, again, we have, we have these devotionals, uh, we have uh, we have uh, the the study plans. We have apps for our telephone. We have places to keep notes, and and all of this will help us to get much much better at wielding the sword of the spirit. I hope I didn't lose you. I said a whole lot. Um, I don't know that I really explained it all well. But what I'll do is I've got all these notes and it's typed out in a very legible way and I'll put that on there. You can read it for yourself. I'll put that in the comments again, as I said. But I wanted to share those things with you tonight because again, we are in one of the most amazing days as far as Bible study goes. You can know more about the word of God than what anyone else in history has had access to. You can take these few tools and, st and study and, and sh search and show yourself approved. And, and, and we, we can, even though we don't know how to speak Hebrew, 
even though we don't know how to speak Greek or Aramaic or whatever, we can find exactly what those original words mean so we can put them, as we've talked about, in context and we can understand what God was saying to those people of that day and what he's saying to us today. This is all readily available to us. We just have to make use of it. If you have the internet and you're watching this, you have access to it. So with those things said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move forward. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you again, if you've not watched the rest of this study, back up and watch it. If, if you have and, and you're learning anything from it, if you've learned anything over the course of these last uh, 10 weeks, then I, I just ask that you, uh, that you share this video and, and uh, get others involved. We've got two more videos to go, if I'm not mistaken. We're going, about, we're going to talk about what we've learned, how to put it to, to use, and we're going to talk about just a conclusion. So I want to ask you to share these and to, uh, and to, to delve in Use some of these resources that I've shared with you and just delve into what the Spirit has to say. All right, um, before we move on, let me just uh, invite you that if you, uh, if, you, if you are looking for a good place to, to sow into good soil, South Knoxville Church of God is a great, it's a great place, it's a great field to sow into. You can give to the church by, by texting SKCOG to the number 779 Seven seven, SKCOG. Just text that to seven seven nine seven seven. SKCOG seven seven nine seven seven. Or you can go to skcog.com, click the give button, and you can give right there. On either of those, uh, you should be able to set up a reoccurring gift if you'd like, or you can do an individual gift. And again, um, South Knoxville is. Uh, it is a nonprofit, so uh, you'll receive a statement at the end of the year for giving. If you want it, you'll get it. Um, also, uh, one more thing, I wanted to uh, just invite you to service this Sunday. We'll be outside again, uh, drive through at least one more Sunday. I don't, or drive in, not drive through. Uh, I don't know how long we'll be out after that. I'm meeting with the council this week, and we're going to be talking about uh, what our options are, and we've got a lot of things that I'm going to put on the table. Um, but be in prayer for us, be in prayer for your leadership. Uh, we're doing the very best we can to keep you safe and to keep everyone healthy, and, um, and, but we're after God as well. So uh, keep us in prayer. We're praying for you. We love you. Before we end, I'd like to just close in prayer, and uh, we'll just pray that God just pours his spirit out upon your Bible study. Go after God. Heavenly Father, as we as we end this session, God, I pray that you would just speak to each uh, person who's watching this tonight. God, I pray that um, my feeble attempt to explain these tools, Lord, would, would have been received. And Lord, if they didn't get it quite, they can go to the, the notes and, and, and uh, be able to use these tools, God, to, to search out your word and to seek, to ask, seek, knock, uh, to go deeper into the things of your spirit. God, I pray that you'd open up their understanding. Help them not to get sidetracked, God, by, by, by things that, um, that might be like rabbit trails that take them away from the study of the truth or uh, help them, Lord, not to, uh, not to fall into uh, the, the thinking that they have to know uh, Gnosticism, basically, thinking that they have to know everything about you to, to have relationship with you. Thank you, God, for your grace. But God, we do know that you want us to know more about you and you want to reveal yourself to us. And I pray that you'd reveal yourself to us through your word, not only the written word, but also the logos, the, the living word, Jesus Christ. And we thank you, God, for this time together. I pray your blessing upon every household, every person watching, and we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you Sunday, hope, and, and uh, we'll, we'll look forward to next week at 6.30.